part one I was building this display plinth thing. Second stage is all the prep work prior to finishing it. So I'm going to take you through all that now. Let's head over to the bench. So I'll quickly show you, I've already done some of the stuff off camera because it's a little bit boring. But what I've done so far, I've put a little bit of primer on the top surface. I'm just using acrylic primer undercoat. I'm using Leyland stuff, but use whatever you want. Mainly to get the edge grain covered on the top edge. I've also done a bit on the bottom edge as well and filled that little hole on the bottom as well. The bottom's less of a concern to be honest, but the main thing's making sure that's got a coat of primer on. This isn't the finished coat primer, by the way. This, most of this is gonna get sanded off. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. I've also filled all the nail holes. I normally use either a two-part filler, like uh, the Ron Seal stuff is pretty good, or um, uh, a Ron Seal stuff in a tube. This stuff I find is better for when you're doing loads and loads of little nail holes. Because the trouble is with using this to do nail holes if you've got a lot of them to do. You're spending more time mixing your filler than you are actually using it. So this is great if you need something to dry really quickly. Although this dries pretty quick as well to be honest. But this is really good if you've got like deeper gaps that need to dry. Or you've only got a few holes to do or, or, or whatever. But if you've got loads and loads of nail holes to do, which I've got literally thousands to do in all of these units that I'm doing, I prefer to use a filler like this. It still dries really quick. Not as quick as this, but it, it dries really quick. So I've filled all the nail holes and I've primed the top and bottom, ready for sanding. I'll take you through the gear I'm going to be using for this. As I say, wood filler, but I'm using the other one, sorry. So I'm using that wood filler for all the little holes, acrylic primer undercoat. I've got me dust mask, which I will have on during all of this work. Um, I will have the air cleaner running as well. The dust levels will go through the roof when I'm doing this. Even when I'm using dust extraction on the sander, the dust levels go through the roof. And to be honest, I've found the dust levels go so high, even when I've got a hoover or a vacuum plugged into the, the sander, the dust levels go high anyway. And I've got the air cleaner on and I've got my dust mask on. So therefore, I'm just making use with the bag on the sander. I find having the hose connected is just too much of a pain in the backside. Sander wise, I'm using two random orbit sanders. I've got the bigger six inch one, which I've got with quite an aggressive grit on this. This is, a, I think, an 80 grit on that. Uh, yeah, an 80 grit on that one. And then I've got the smaller little DeWalt 6423. Lovely little sander, this one. Really happy with it. And this one, I've got 120 grit on this one. And then I've also got a big bit of wood with a big bit of sandpaper. Um, just a piece of, what's that? Just a piece of stud timber that I'm using with a big piece on. And this is for finishing off like the edges and stuff. Just, it makes it much easier if you've got a big flat piece of wood. This is a, again, quite an aggressive piece, but I'm being gentle with it. It just gives us a bit more flexibility to take either a lot of material off or if I'm just being gentle with it, then I can just take a little bit off. But this is a, a 60 grit that I'm using on that. You can get away with maybe 120. And what I'm using these for, because I'm not gonna talk about it during while I'm working because I'll have the dust mask on, so I can't really talk while I'm doing the job. This, the big sander is gonna be used for doing all of the edge grain, because that's gonna take most of the sanding. And then all of the nail holes and stuff like that, I'm gonna do with a little sander, just because it's easier on the wrist, you know, it's, it's, this is a kind of one-handed job, whereas this one you should probably do two-handed, but well. Never works out like that. But yeah, so as I say, edge grain on that one, most of the face grain on this one, and then I'm just gonna gently, very, very gently knock back the edges with the big strip piece. If you've done a decent job of building the unit, it shouldn't take any longer than about five minutes to sand it. 
So the better job that you've done in stage one of building it, the easier this is going to be. If you've been a bit sloppy in building it, you're going to have a lot more sanding to do. So <laughs> let's see how we get on. There we go, that's it all ready for finishing now, so ready for final painting. I'll do the painting in a separate video, that'll be part three. But I'll, all I was going to say, I forgot to mention before, I did screw some little kind of stops onto my bench just to stop the thing that I'm sanding from moving around so much or you can clamp something to your bench. It's not really practical to clamp the actual unit to your bench. You can do that if you want, but uh, and using like an anti-slip mat, forget it because it's so covered in dust. It's not very anti-slippy by the time you've done like one of these. Fair enough if all you're doing is one or two, but where I've got like 50 or 60 of them to make, you know, it, um, it doesn't really work out very practical so I prefer using stop blocks on the bench that works quite well. In case you're wondering why have I bothered to paint it with primer and then sand all of the paint off? Well good question. The primer serves at this stage the primer serves two purposes. First of all it seals the end grain of the MDF so this is now ready for paint. The grain has raised as much as the grain is going to raise I've sanded back the, the raised grain and now any more paint that this receives, this is already sealed from the paint that's kind of soaked into it as long as you haven't had to sand too much of it off. But um, even though you can't see the paint anymore, this MDF is, is pretty well sealed now. So when I apply the final coat of undercoat, it'll not really raise the grain anymore. And the other reason for priming it is that it lets you see any kind of high spots and low spots so it makes it much easier to see where you've sanded and where you haven't sanded basically and if there's any bits that are going to need a bit extra sanding so my golden rule with all of this is that if you can feel any bumps in the surface at all and I have to you'll have to take my word for it that this feels totally 100% smooth I cannot feel any difference between the edge grain and the face grain MDF there. But if you can feel any bumps at all, you'll see them. So the whole purpose of this stage is, is literally just to fill any holes, get it ready for paint and make sure that it feels perfectly smooth. Come back in part three and I'll show you how I paint it. <laughs> 